Hi, neuroplasticians. I'm very excited to be on the channel with KTV today. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing really well. Thank well, you. I'm yes, so honored to be here. We're going to have the rock and roll fun of the day. I can feel it in my bones. We're going to have so much fun. Look at you already getting excited. Katie, before we get carried away, let's just like slow down for a second and let's help everybody catch up to your genius. Give us a bit of a background. Give us a bit of a story. Let's everybody settle into learning a bit about you. All right. So I have, a, a, let's see, for the past mm, 30 years, I've been an entertainer and focused primarily on clown and the healing modalities that clowns can bring since officially uh, 2010. And during COVID, obviously, I got shut down. So what's a clown to do? Shut down. <laughs> but mm. try and find other ways <clears throat> to improve uh, people's lives. So I started a nonprofit called Joy First Foundation. Yes. And that organization is dedicated to gratitude, acknowledgement, appreciation, love, and also using modalities like laughter yoga and applied improvisation to impact bullying and suicidal prevention. And it's still an experiment. Um, I, I've been touring for three years. And I just stopped in a small town to see what kind of impact these modalities can have in a certain location. And I'm in the process of finding that out right now. And um, and I just want to say one thing Joy first started with was giving gratitude to all of the workers that helped us get through COVID. Grocery workers, physicians, senior care workers, and more. And clowns, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, if if you're if you're not laughing, you're not having fun, or maybe you're being hysterical. But um, but but the, the idea that I believe is that to build a brain that learns neuroplasticity, it can be done in two ways. One, it can be done through having a traumatic experience, or it can be done through finding joy, being playful, having joy, as you well say. So so tell us a bit about how your work ties into neuroplasticity. Tell us how your brain shows up with the the science and your thinking around that, Katie. So it's, it's actually really interesting, JJ. In this experiment that I've been on for all these years now, I've discovered that one of the things that we do by just giving gratitude to someone who's not expecting it is we live in our routine. We live in our thoughts. We live in, in this kind of space that's, that's uh, all the, you know, uh, consistently moving, right? But consistently moving along the neural pathways that we have in our everyday life. And all of a sudden, a stranger comes up to you and says, thank you for being alive today. Thank you for being on earth today. And all of a sudden, we've just accessed neural pathways that people might not be aware that can be accessed by other people. And then it becomes this reciprocal mirror, right? Neural mirroring, neural, you can help me with that. Um, the, the mirroring um, neurons that all of a sudden it's reciprocal. So what happens is, is you give the gratitude, you get the gratitude, and now you're doing this neural dance together, nice. and it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, you really have have summed it up. I've I've got. I mean, let's decide where we're going to go because we can go anywhere. But I've got two ideas. One is to dive into the protocols, the pracademic expertise around humor around uh around the, the the protocols that you're speaking about which, which i find very interesting from improv to humor to 
clown artistry, if that's even a phrase, um, <laughs> and everything else. Between. So that's the one area we can go down. The other idea is to explore what is joy. Have a bit of a, a philosophical, linguistic discussion. So um, where do you think, where do you, would? where would you rather go? What is up for you? Oh, they're both pretty amazing. <laughs> you can, you can um, only, we can do both. Where do you want to start? What's what's more tantalizing? What's let's more... start with your first inspiration. Okay. Well, the, the first the first comment you mean. Yeah. Okay. So give us a give us a deep dive into the reason, the thinking behind your work. Um you know. If I if I look back at my childhood, um, you know, there were circuses and clowns and they were kind of creepy. You know? Right. They kind of freaked me out a bit as a child, to tell the truth. And this yeah. clown would come up to me at the circus and I'd start crying and I didn't know what to do. So I'd love to hear your insight. I mean, on that. Also around improv, we've got John Whitekin in the community who's uh, he's bought the URL Neuro Improv and you've got to speak to him, he's brilliant. Um, and you know um, Karen from from the the, the humor uh, humans and, <laughs> and 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 your work as well. So tell me how you well, tell me how this all how all these puzzles put together Katie yeah so um I was a sick kid actually and um I was always ending up in the ER you know because of my asthma every time we went on vacation and so there was a lot of trauma in my growing up also my grandmother killed herself before I was born so I never met her and I knew she really struggled and when I was starting to go to circus school and learn, and even before that, I was, we have some Cherokee, possibly Chickasaw, I'm still doing the research, in our family, Native American, uh, First Nations history okay. and connection. And what I discovered is that if you look at the origins of clown, and we're talking before European clowns, each tribe has a clown, which would be also considered a medicine person. And the clown, basically their job was to remove the negative energy in the space and allow for the positive to come in. And that was the root of all of my clowning. Create a safe space, allow for improv. I also started doing improv in middle school. So it's been a huge, massive part of my life. Uh, it's a lifestyle for me. And so I would come in clowning to offer completely new experiences for these kids. I juggle. So I would sh do shows with juggling and hula hooping. And I would get the kids to improv with me. And that was just enough to take care of the situation, to make sure that the kids were having a really positive experience, learning amazing things, seeing amazing things, and taking them out of their normal day. And it's sort of a theme in my life. I've also created um, festivals that feed the homeless. And so we in the, you know, a few years ago, we would take 24 hours in a large scale space and fill it with humorous, weird, and surprising visual of things happening, like tiptoeing down the street on stilts with fairy wings and a hula hoop, for example. <laughs> so <clears throat> we would pass by storefronts while they were in the middle of their work. And the goal was that they look out the window and go, wow, what is that? And it's this other opportunity to create a whole different reality for just a second. And I believe that all of these activities, if you are able to open the door an inch, then people start to understand that they can open the door six inches. And they can create this for themselves 
But we have to shake ourselves out of our normal because our normal is just neural pathways that are just used to firing, you know, and until we start to see that we can do something different, then now we're talking opening up opportunities, brain opportunities, ways to think differently, all of those things. Sure, there's so much, there's so much to unpack there. So you're, you're kind of like a code breaker in the sense that you get people out of their out of their boring norms and get them to see the the bright side of life if you know that Monty Python quote. But anyway, I'm not gonna of go <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go with peace if, if if that's okay. But you know, tell me tell me what you do with this institute so that we can understand what a, a day in the life of Katie looks like. How and what are you doing exactly? Well, so uh, in the daily activities, right, I'm going about my day and I'm talking on the phone to people taking care of business, talking to my bank, talking to, uh, you know, whatever service I might be needing. And and I'm walking around or outside, driving around, taking care of my errands. And every time I do that, I consider the person in front of me. Who's in front of me? Or who's on the phone? That person is trying to make a living. That person is trying to feed their family and just get by, like most everybody in the world. Mm. And a lot of people don't consider that, so they get cranky at that person. And what I do is try and shake that person out of their norm, and I look them in the eye. I give them a gift, a little, a little 3D printed joy or something or a card that says a little joy on it and I say can I give you a little joy and they kind of look at me and go okay and I <laughs> hand them this thing and then I look them in the eye I give them a standing ovation and I say thank you for being alive today thank you for being on earth today and I have a few phrases like this thank the you for being on, thank you for being alive on earth today. <laughs> Thank you. I love this. I love this. You are so <laughs> you are so my cup of tea, Kenya. I love this. <laughs> Thank I love you. this. We are going to be so much friends. Not because I <laughs> want to be friendly, but because I believe that is how the brain learns best. And I believe that you really have tapped into so many important things. So many important things. I want, I want to come back to joy for a second. Yes. Because this word is... Let me tell you a quick story. Okay, so I was speaking yeah. I was speaking to this woman and her name was Joy. And we were speaking about laughter and humor to something like this. And I was telling her about the Playfulness Institute, which is a person in the hub I'm introduced you to, is great fun. And I was speaking to her, you know, I said she I said to her, it must be really nice having the name Joy. You know, you're always positive. And she said, You won't believe how difficult it is to have a name like this, because you're always expected to be happy. You're always expected to be the joyful one. And she says, it's no, it's actually a burden. You would think to have a name like Joy would be kind of joyful. But she says it is, it's kind of debilitating, she said. So what do you make of that, Katie? Let me tell you something I recently discovered. So my name is Kate, Katie B, right? I created name for myself Katie B because my middle name is Beatrice okay. and Beatrice was the name of my grandmother who committed suicide before I was born when I looked up the meaning of her name it means the one who brings joy and the wanderer and I've toured 
many, many years in my lifetime. Mm. And I was absolutely amazed that I have spent prob I've spent 14 years using this name without realizing how related it is to what came to me with Joy First. And it came to Joy First came to me in a meditation, the name. Okay. okay. And um, we were doing uh, emotional support sessions for Ukrainian refugees online mm. and uh, in an international group. And so I, the conversation was, well, I think we need to start an NGO. And I said, I have the name. And it came up that morning. <laughs> and I followed my gut a lot and my intuition a lot. So what do I think about joy? Joy is delight. It's created. It's created through reciprocity. It's created through action and presence. Being present can help us understand joy and appreciate joy in the moment. And we forget that we need it. And we can't have joy without sorrow. I'm also a domestic violence survivor. And mm -hmm. so I start my day every day with gratitude. And I consciously and intentionally create joy in my day. It's not always something that comes automatically. And it's so much better when we share it. So if I approach and I'm a bit joyful, sometimes that puts people off a little bit. But then when we start talking, I get to give a little and when I give that little bit, I get a lot back. And in these joyful moments is what I call them, these spontaneous moments, mm -hmm. people cry. They tell me their story. I get very emotional, too, about it when I think about all of the stories I've heard. People get really honest. And it's it's funny when people when I say thanks for being alive today and they go, oh, yeah, I'm glad I'm still here. And then they start telling me their story of whatever they've just survived or what they're in the process of working through. And then I'm able to give them support. And it's a random stranger giving people support. You know, there is. There is the the session the, the the comment you said about the the tribal healer being the person who clears the energy. You know, current medicine is pretty pathological in the way it it treats uh, people in the need of care, and it's not a very a careful science. Medicine is very it's very brutal science. Um, and I'm sure you've seen the movie Patch Adams, and you can quote from it. But the but the the, the thinking from where I'm sitting is that I'm really stuck on the idea of the healer being the person that clears the air, not the anesthesiologist. So, so you want to be present, and you want to be engaged in the process. So. <laughs> Let me just think this out with you, okay? So yeah. we've got we've got joy, okay, which is a good idea. I, I love it. I think it's a great idea. More joy, you know. There's not much bad that can happen from that. The roots to joy, I believe, involve humor, laughter, playfulness. Yes, and. I was recently walking down the road. I am going to interrupt you quickly. I want to add another word to that. Kindness. Yeah. Kindness. Oh, yeah? Well, how does kindness fit in? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see it now. And please continue with your story. So we're walking down the road and speaking to my wife, and I look at her, and at the corner of my eye, I see the most incredibly large rainbow. Mm -hmm. It looked like the aliens were coming. It was so huge. And I looked up and she looked, she looked at what's going on. And we turned around, we both just stood there, like drooling, looking at this huge uh, rainbow. 
And I said to her, that was the most awesome experience. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking about the word awe. And I thought, and maybe you can help me, does the word awe fit into this constellation of joy and kindness and humor and laughter and play? Yes, as a matter of fact, last year at the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor Conference, Alan Klein spoke about his new book, which I'm going to, The Awe Factor, How a Little Bit of Wonder. You've got to give that to me. Um, I thought I was the dude who found this whole idea, but if he beat me to it, cool. <laughs> Send me the link after the call. We'll, we won't, let's, let's not scribble around trying to find it now. But yeah. Does he speak into all these domains that I've been speaking about as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he connected awe and humor to be the same. The same brain waves, basically. The same. Really? really? Yeah, the same pathways. That's what that I mean, was. I don't, th I don't think I agree with him, just at a purely psychological level, because awe is. is it is. Wonder. You oh, wonder, yeah. Then you, you, yeah. you kind of just, you kind of see the light. Yes. Okay? You, you, don't, you don't want to run. You don't want to laugh. You don't want to, you don't want to talk. You just want to be bathing in that experience. Humor, maybe it's the same. Like I'm just catching myself out here. Well, when, so when, when something is humorous, you're kind of just paying attention, aren't you? Yeah, I think both bring you into the present moment and allow you to have something to yes. savor, right? Beautifully and, said. And if we spend 20 seconds savoring the moment, we lock it into our memory, we're able to re-access those feelings to bring joy or awe, right? And the example he showed in his, speak, in his um, speech was actually a rainbow. And it was people reacting... <laughs> <laughs> to the rainbow with laughter and awe and oh my gosh it's so beautiful this like intensity of feeling and i think they are similar a joy can be on a, a scale than, too. a lot similar than i would have liked to admit but when i'm in that experience with other people i often get goofy i often play the clown i often get silly sometimes it's kind of adds to the moment and you know ah, ah, ah silly whatever nice it's it adds to the it adds to the experience but sometimes it's a bit inappropriate but i have a question and the question katie is is silliness part of playfulness is it part of this i'm calling it a constellation of things do you think silliness fits in or is it stretching it out Oh, I think it's incredibly important. Uh, for me, silliness is uh, is a way to. It's part of the bonding process, and and people who struggle, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> people who struggle to have a little bit of fun and uh, get silly. <laughs> no, nobody can concentrate when it when you when you're clowning around. But, you know, I think people are afraid to be silly. They're afraid to let go. And and mm. the most important education we can have right now is if we can play together, we can bond together faster, better, get closer, learn more about each other, and get that mirror neuron thing happening that allows us to feel connected. And I am pretty constantly kind of silly. And so um, I find the people with me are not terribly comfortable with being as silly as I am, unless there's, a, there's something to unpack here, because being silly is part showmanship. And it's a part of, of vulnerability because, you know, people can definitely say, what, the, what the hell are you doing? And it is part of lightening the energy, lightening, making things a little bit silly. You know, the word says itself. Yes. But by 
The question that I'm having in my mind now, is there a hierarchy of these things or is it all just one big jumble sale? Um, I think there's a scale to joy. Okay. I think that the more we're able to reciprocate and feel vulnerable and yet give to each other, the more joy we get. If that Say that makes again. Sense. Say that again. I think the more we are able to connect and allow the connection and the and the mirror neurons and not resist, the more that joy scale can go up, because the rec reciprocity is like a a circle, and the more that we're able to to build that circle cycle the more joy we get and can give. So I approach people, they're in their doldrums of their day in the grocery store. And I stop some random person and say, thanks for being alive today. And they go, whoa, what do you want? And I go, nothing. What are you, what are you, what are you smoking? Right. <laughs> and I'm, you know, let me give you something. I'm not here to take anything. And then they say, some of them will go, oh yeah. I'm ready to be playful and then we'll play back and forth and you can see the raising of the joy. You can see that I'm receiving because they're able to accept what I'm giving and then they want to give back to me too. And some of that's on an energetic level and some of it's on a real physical body level in terms of, are you playful? Can you be playful? Do you allow yourself to be playful? You know, I, I, I made a joke a moment about being stoned and <laughs> and th there's something in that one of it is me being silly but many are true words as you know Shakespeare um, explained so beautifully so many things but when you get stoned or actually many many different uh mind-altering chemicals it, it leaves you in a place where you're not so egocentric that's right so so is this part of the the protocol of getting people to get over themselves is that a good part of it it's not intentional but i do think it's a result okay because this is still an experiment um, I am about to go to a school that mm. is um, related to an Apache um, reservation for First Nations. And I'm hearing that the kids are resistant. They don't want to do any group activities. And so I'm, I'm saying, as I go into the situation, the elders must play and not uh -oh. be the authority we have to How give do, do that i mean that's a huge that's a huge hurdle i'm still learning that? how to do it so i was at in the uh, ashinaabe nation in michigan and i was invited to help with some summer school kids and i invited the staff and the teachers and the children to play together and the, I did not prep the staff. So this was the first time I did this activity and I learned a ton. I didn't prep the teachers to say, this is an improv environment. So when the children misbehave, you don't do your normal, which is take them out of the activity mm. and set them aside and punish them, even if it's just e e extraction, right? The, the teachers must understand a yes and mentality, and we must be able to play with whatever it is that kid is acting out against so that we can give them an opportunity to express what that is. So the next time, well, I've, I did the activity a number of times, but I first arrived here in Arizona where I'm experimenting with this town and I was given an opportunity to go to a school and do this activity there. 
and it, I, they gave me 20 minutes, which, by the way, is not enough time. <laughs> but what I discovered was one group of kids didn't want to play. I didn't invite the adults. That was my bad. So oh. I learned from that. But what I did do in the end, because it was actually a frustrating 20 minutes, I was unable to get to the place I wanted to get to. And that's also not enough time to get there. I sat with the kids who were resisting. I gave them moments of joy. And all of a sudden, I got this vulnerability. Two young girls kind of pointed at their friend and said, her mom is really mean. <laughs> and I said, my mom was really mean. So how old are you? She said, 15. I said, you got three more years. You just have to make it through the next three years, and then you're on your own. Just get through school. And then I looked her very closely in the eye, and I said, you matter more than you know. And all of a sudden, the girls, all of them, got very focused. And I said, it's more important what you do today than all of the other things you have happening in your life. You need to focus on yourself and work on your happiness. And this is like this theme now that I'm working on. I'm in a mining community in Arizona, a very small town with Apache, three Apache reservations around us. I imagine, and I'm making this up, this is my assumption that I'm starting with in this experiment. <clears throat> the kids have grown up with generational trauma with, and they're watching people mine their land and they're not receiving the benefits. And th it gets deeper than that, right? My question is, can we teach these kids how to be present in a playful way, not just sitting and meditating, but playing together and teach kindness and help these kids every day find themselves and find some joy in every day and possibly prevent suicide ideation, have the bullies learn some kindness so that maybe there's a more reciprocity of kindness happening versus authority and struggles. That's the experiment I'm currently working on to see if we can create a framework that could be expanded into larger cities and bring more kindness to everybody's daily life and shift yeah, the this script. Is, this, is so, this is so deep. There's, so, <laughs> there's so much philosophy in this. And the one word that I didn't throw in the mix is happiness, which is kind of surprising. But well, I'm also a, I'm also a chief well-being officer certified by the World Happiness Foundation. Well, Mazel Tov to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what that means, but it sounds very impressive. But, but... Well, let me just explain there, there, there... it. Sorry? Let me, let me just explain that just a little bit, real quick. So the World Happiness Foundation offers this certification. And part of this certification is to look at how to make cities, countries, individuals, groups happier. So I worked with a woman, Mushira, in Egypt as my cohort. And together, we created a framework using the PERMA framework from yeah. positive psychology and other frameworks to study uh, some of the countries that are working towards this, like UAE is working toward a happier country. And in their, in their frameworks, they start with the individual. And then it branches out to get larger and larger groups until you have the country. And so this really affirmed what I'm doing now in terms of working with the individuals and then working with the school and then working with the larger community, for example. And, and that basis is to create that many more happy people and happy situations in the world that care about humanity being happy and teach us all how to be, how to find that happiness. 
So, and I'll stop there because you, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, it's good. What I'm seeing in the notes that I'm writing down is there are things that you do and things that you get. So you get joy, you get happiness, you do play, you do laughter. Is this a useful thing to help people know what they can do and what they'll get? Is that a is that a useful kind of explanation? Does that help in the work that you do? Fred Newman from the Eastside Institute, he was the founder of the Eastside Institute of uh, Social Therapy, along with Lois Holtzman. In Fred's books, he talks about the anxiety of getting. Anxiety is created by what we think we're going to get or not get. Nice. Right? That's his theory. So in this, I believe that, yes, if if I, when I'm teaching joyful yoga, so I combine kundalini hatha and laughter together into a physical class. But I tell them, I tell my students, we are working on our brain chemistry. So when we do this, when we tap and giggle, we're opening up oxytocin, dopamine, serotonin, and all the goodness. Let's do it. Help, let's, you know, let's do it. Let's do it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Tap with your fingers on the crown of your head. Take a deep breath in, sigh it out first, sigh out what doesn't serve you today. And then take a deep breath in and just giggle. <laughs> <laughs> and then tap your heart and thank your heart for just beating when you're not even paying attention, right? And take a deep breath in. And giggle it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this so much. I love it. I would love it. Uh, I'm going to tickle my nipples. <laughs> 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 oh, it's so naughty, huh? It's so naughty. <laughs> well, no, we've got it. Katie, I'm going to stop before we've had too much fun. Okay. We're is clearly on our list of things here. Um, so, so there are two things. One, we've got to have a, a round table using these protocols, laughter, yoga, whatever else it is in call. I think that's such a great idea. Would you be up to doing that? Would that sound like something you absolutely? You keep so that would be so much fun. So we've got to introduce you to to some people. Chris Marshall. Um, John Whitkin, Greg Pitcher, you know, Karen. And I know Karen and Scottish too. Yes, you do know this too. <laughs> and, um, so that there, there's this, there's something here. There's probably like a, there's a thing here of people who are all going to do this, you know, just, just build this up as a, as an important part of our culture yeah. in the community and how we can trickle that out and, you know, inform our ecosystems. So I'm, I'm so excited about this. Thank you for that playfulness and silliness and uh, giggly experience. It is, it is surprisingly <laughs> easy. Yes. Uh, sure. And this is so philosophically interesting to me. But let me let me let me pause here because otherwise I think I want to carry on with you all day. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let, we could probably let, do that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing. I'm just trying to make sure that we don't drag the podcast out too long. But of course. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely not a bad thing. <laughs> no, no, it's it's a great thing. But I mean, is there any like final uh, pearls of wisdom or comments or just things that we can share with the community? Are there any? final comments that you want to share out perhaps katie absolutely um i've been writing music lately and letting ai create songs for me from my lyrics and one of the first songs that i wrote is called turn around and the theme of the song is turn around see who's behind you 
and give them a moment of energy because everyone is going through something all the time. Everyone's not talking about it. They're not dealing with it possibly. And we all have something like that. So turn around and give some gratitude to the person next to you, behind you, near you, whatever that means in the moment, as much well, as you well, can. Well, Katie, I'd like to say that <laughs> all of a sudden you are behind me and I would like to share my gratitude and my delight. Maybe delight should be on the list as well. Anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm clearly a linguist rather than a humorist, but <laughs> Um, we're going to have so much fun on this, Katie. Thank you so much for the blessing of your your expertise. And um, let's not stop clowning around. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, JJ. It's really been a pleasure. I really appreciate all that you're doing as well. Let's keep up the momentum. Thank you, my friend. Speak Thank to you. you soon. Bye -bye. All right. Take care.